Welcome back. So part of week three for College 101 looks at assessments or academic skills. And there's a, there's a lot of interesting parts to this. So we're going to try to break it down into five things I think that we should kind of be thinking about or focusing on. So the first is, what is college teaching? All right. What does college teaching look like? Really, what is the point of all of this? Right. So some folks go to college for the purpose or they look at it from the perspective of it's essentially job training for them. Uh, you know, they want to be able to get enough knowledge and skill to go out and to be employed in a particular position. Others, although this is far less common in the 21st century, look at it as a way to kind of enrich themselves, right? They just want to learn for the sake of learning. Generally, when it comes to most transfer classes, be it humanities or sociology or psych or lit or com or history or poli sci or econ or, you know, any number of different kinds of disciplines. Generally, the educator, the professor, is trying to get you to learn for the sake of learning. They want you to be able to learn independently, to be able to take resources and to be able to analyze and think about those resources in a way that addresses issues in that discipline. So I teach history, right? The goal isn't necessarily for me to force folks to do something. It's to get folks to see how to use resources around them to understand the past and how that understanding of the past can help them think critically about the world around them, okay? What does that mean? It means that independent learning is a big part of the college process and the college teaching process. And that's something that not everyone is used to when they first get to school. And so what that means is the academic skills that help them to be successful in K through 12 might not help you to be successful as much in college. All right. So that's that's part of it. The second thing then is when it comes to studying, when it comes to preparing for an assignment, a quiz, a test, a discussion board, a paper, a presentation, really anything you can think of. To start off with, you got to go with what works best for you. All right. Are you someone who you like to have a little music in the background? Does that kind of help, you know, kind of mellow the situation? Are you somebody who it's got to be quiet? I know that when I was in high school, I had to have it quiet. When I was in college, I had to have it quiet. Even now, when I prep a lecture or something like that, for me, I can't have any music on. It's got to be quiet. You got to go with what works best for you. If you're someone who, though, being able to spend a set amount of time on task is difficult, there are many different programs and ways to kind of get the ball rolling, to kind of get the process of getting on task started. Chapter four gets into that a lot, so you can read more about it if you want. But generally for me, the way that I often think about it is you know best how to study to do well for you. Third, cramming and multitasking and stuff like that. All right, chapter four looks at like test anxiety, cramming for a test, how to get ready for finals, you know, stuff like that. There's enough evidence generally that says that cramming isn't necessarily going to help you retain information in the long term and that multitasking actually doesn't help you to learn anything either. So my advice would be set out a process of achieving what it is that you want because multitasking isn't going to help you in the way that you think it will. Fourth, if you need help, the purpose of a community college is to be able to be there to provide that help for you. The goal of someone like me or anyone in my position, so I teach history, but I also work with College 101, is, yeah, I do my sort of history content, you know, slavery's bad, Nazis are bad, and that's important. But the other part of this is to make sure that we can be a resource to help you achieve what you want. Meaning that the tutoring center on campus, if you need it, take advantage of it. There's no shame in that. Writing center help. Need a little help with how to organize a paper, how to organize your writing and thoughts? Even professional writers have tough times getting the words together in the right order. There's no shame in it at all. Take advantage of the help that's there. It's there for you. Fifth, if you have a bad interaction with a professor, that happens, and I'm sorry. Take it up with them. The way that it usually works at Moraine Valley is... The expectation is that you will, if you have a difficult issue with a grade, that you will reach out to the professor first. If 
you've done that and it goes nowhere, then it's okay to take it up the chain of command. So you can take it to that individual's department chair. You can take it to the dean or a vice president or more. If there are issues of harassment, et cetera, then we need to get student affairs and Title IX individuals involved. By all means, we need to do that. We want to make sure that you are safe and respected at this institution and wherever you go. But again, if you have a problem with a grade, with something like that, generally the first thing you want to do is you email the professor, you call the professor's office, you want to be able to reach out to them first and say, I'm having a difficulty with this. I'm not sure I agree. Can we please go over this so I can understand why? And again, if you don't feel that you have satisfaction with that, by all means, it's okay to then move to the next level. But you always want to start with that first level of talking to the professor. All right. Thanks so very much.